Welcome back guys to another episode of Solo Advice, where we like to keep energy solutions simplified. In today's episode guys, I'm gonna walk through my solar power system. And um, I'm quite excited to show you. And it didn't always look like this. It did start from humble beginnings, and I'll tell you all about that. But the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna introduce you to what it looks like today. And I'll tell you how much uh, I'm consuming and how much um, I'm producing. Now, you might have seen my other video on this inverter. I think it was this one which we actually talked about. We took it off the wall and added it in the studio. So this is the five kilowatt hybrid inverter, the Fusion. So at the moment, um, I've got it turned off. It's very hot today. Although they're not very noisy, but I just wanted to keep it super quiet, is uh, we turned off the, not so much the inverter, but we turned off the power going into the inverter. So it's not quite working at the moment. So the first thing I'm gonna go through is, uh, as you can see, I've got two. Uh, I started off with one 5 kilowatt inverter and as my needs grew and I'll tell you uh, pretty much what I'm running at the moment on a, you know, on a daily basis. So I've got myself a, a dishwasher, I've got obviously a fridge freezer, um, I've got a, um, a washing machine, I've got a heat pump tumble dryer um, which I highly recommend you guys getting. I got a, a heat pump for my, my geezer uh, which again I recommend that one as well and I've got a crypto miner. <laughs> so in case you guys don't know what a crypto miner is, it takes a lot of power and it produces some cryptocurrency, uh, but it runs on around 850 watts uh, at any given time. So I need uh, quite a bit of power constantly to, to run that as well. Um, of course, I got a stove and things, but that is now on my solar system. Also got an irrigation, uh, which comes on about twice a day, uh, once in the morning and once uh, the e you know, close to the evening while the sun's still up. And I've also got a pool um, and that runs just an hour or so a day in the middle of the day. Now, of course, I've got a lot of timers and things like that, which I, um, which I put in for automation to make sure that I'm running all these things at the right time of the day. There's no point running things at night because obviously I haven't got the sun to power them. So back to this guy. So I started with the five kilowatts. And like I said, my needs grew. Um, I got a few other appliances and then I realized actually I need to have more power because I kept on tripping the system. So it was exceeding that five kilowatt uh, um, limit. And although these can handle uh, more than that, but only for a small duration, and then it will just trip for, for safety. So you don't blow your inverter. So we added another one. And when you stitch two inverters together like this, they, they say it's in parallel. So it goes five and five is those 10 kilowatts uh, capacity that, it, that, that I have right now. And then moving on, I've got um, my batteries. They may, may look pretty massive, but uh, there's basically two 3.6 kilowatt hour batteries inside. So there's one on the top and one on the bottom. Uh, and also I got another one down here, as you can see. So that equals 14.4 kilowatt hours. Now, the one thing I love about this cabinet is that uh, you can obviously take the, the front off. I wouldn't recommend this any, if you didn't know how to do, you know, electrical work, I'd recommend getting installer to do this for you. So the benefit of having something like this, uh, it looks neat and tidy as you can see. And I can swap out these rack, because they're rack mounted batteries inside here. Um, I'll try and get a little snippet of what it looks like inside, but essentially one is stacked you know, long ways up here and one is stacked, you know, at the bottom like this, like so. And then they connect it together and then obviously connect it to this disconnect, which then connects to the inverter. So eventually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna swap up my 3.6s for 4.8s. Um, at the moment, we don't have any stock of those. So I have to obviously be patient and wait for those. But that's the plan for my next iteration of of the system. So next thing is I've got myself a quite a massive solar array on my roof now. Uh, just recently I increased the number of panels. Um, I think I have around, I think it's 10, 16, um, I, got, I think I got 26 panels in total. Uh, there are 410 watt panels if I'm not mistaken. And if I was to do the math, I do not know how much that equates to. So just work that out. It's about 10.6 kilowatts of uh, PV array that I have. I started with uh, 16 panels at the time, 
Uh, I should have worked that out too. So 16 times 410, 6.5 kilowatt array. So uh, in, the, in the early stages, and uh, this will go on to how I started this whole thing and why I had to evolve my system as well. So I first started with my five kilowatt Axpin inverter and I had a 6.5 kilowatt array to run my household. But what was happening is um, once things were turned on during the day, like the, I had an old tumble dryer back then as well, which was consuming all my energy. So we took that off the system and then we ran the, the washing machine and we went around the, um, the dishwasher and so on. And obviously the pool pump and things like that. And it was before I had my crypto miner. So uh, outgrowing that system was, didn't take very long to be honest with you, um, with things happening. And, and also I found that that particular inverter was quite noisy. Um, I should have a picture popping up somewhere around here so I can show what it looks like. And not a bad inverter, again, it's a budget inverter. So it's not gonna do everything that you want it to do like what these guys can do. So I do go over this in another video if you guys wanna check that out um, in great detail. But essentially, like I said, I outgrew the, uh, the inverter. And then the next step was to, well, I wanted to get a hybrid inverter because don't, don't forget, with the off-grid inverter, it doesn't blend the energy, which is probably one of the most important factors when it comes to uh, hybrid and off-grid inverters. So it, by not blending the energy, I had pretty much was, could only use the power during the peak times of the sun. So whilst it was going, the sun was going down, I wasn't getting any of that energy because it was sw switching right back over to grid or it was just draining my battery very quickly. So once I uh, swapped that out, it wasn't one of these, it was a, a so far six kilowatt inverter. Um, and I still had that 4.8 kilowatt hour battery. Uh, the issues I actually found with that one, the inverter was a good quality inverter, but the communication between the battery and that inverter wasn't proper. And therefore there was a lot of errors coming up and things like that. So don't forget that you need to have comms or communications with the battery of your choice of inverter. That's very important. Um, so after that, um, I thought to myself, well, I'm going to be expanding anyway. Why not get something that I can expand with? With Because the SoFi inverted actually didn't parallel either. So that was the other thing. Uh, I wanted something that I could expand with my needs. So the first step was to install this uh, new inverter. I also upgraded my uh, DB box, uh, my two DB boxes here. So they are um, waterproof. Well, I say waterproof, water resistant, I should say, because in the winter, sometimes I have a couple of leaks and I wanted to be safe that I wasn't going to short any, any electrical equipment. What I did then was install this guy, I hooked him up to the 16 panels and yeah, it was working very, very well. Um, I had then two 4.8 kilowatt hour batteries. So I had a 9.6 kilowatt hour battery bank. So I had a nice upgrade from that, which was pretty much sitting here. I've got a whole bunch of holes on this wall here where it's like Swiss cheese now. So um, I had a, the inverter here, had the battery here, had the second battery here, which was working great for a while. And then again, I got other appliances. Uh, I got aircon units. I've got two now, but at that time I got one. And I kept on tripping the system. So these systems are designed to trip safely. So as long as you have the ins installer install everything properly, you should be able to exceed and trip and not damage your inverter. Um, with off-grid inverters, however, you gotta be very careful with that. Um, so with that, uh, my needs grew again very quickly and I realized, oh wow, I need more, even more. So the first step was to get another battery um, because that was gonna last me through the night. Um, so I got another 4.8 hour battery, which was the same type of battery that I had previously. And I'll try and get a picture of that for you as well. So I had one here, one here, and one here. So I was had plenty of battery, but again, I needed to harness more uh, power from the sun. So then what I did next is, uh, first of all, I installed this next guy. Uh, and this is, this is not hooked up to any uh, solar power just yet. Um, although the panels are ready, and maybe tomorrow, I think probably tomorrow I'll be hooked up completely but all the, the, the 16 panels are going into this one and the uh, 10 are gonna go into this one. So that's gonna, these two are gonna take the load. So that's, I'm really excited about that because I do want that 
boost the power, especially in the afternoon where I'm not using any grid power at all. I shouldn't have to be using grid power because I've got plenty of capacity here. Um, a battery, however, you can never have too much battery to be perfectly honest with you when you want to go off grid. Um, and I do go through that uh, in another video. So check that one out as well. So the plans now is to get that hooked up, get this online, and I think I'm pretty much ready to rock and roll. Uh, and this is probably phase three of my system. And I think the next phase after that is probably going to be uh, adding additional battery, uh, uh, battery to these guys, probably swapping batteries inside out for big capacity batteries. But what I also do, and this is something I highly recommend you do, uh, throughout all of the process of my first solar system to what it looks like today, monitor all of your usage. Now, one of the things I neglected to do thinking, oh, well, I've got this system in place, don't have to worry about anything anymore. Well, it's, it's far from the truth. You really do have to like monitor your consumption and this system comes with a, well it doesn't come with, but there's an app that you can um, use with the system and it's called SolarMan. SolarMan is a very, uh, a very good uh, software. It comes in the mobile app and it also has a desktop um, uh, version as well. The desktop version is very, very good. I prefer the desktop version to the mobile version just because it's just easier to use. There's a lot of data to, con to try and consume and understand and so on. So run your, <clears throat> run your system for a while, monitor it, see what's coming on and off, even trying a few things as well. Um, and again, I can't uh, suggest enough getting those Wi-Fi timers in. Uh, they, some, they're called Wi-Fi switches or Wi-Fi timers. You can either get the, and uh, you probably can't see in this view, which we'll show in a minute, they, um, they fit into the DB board. You can also get them to uh, connect through your cable as well of your appliance. So those are good just for turning on and automating your, your usage throughout the day. So I'll give you a really good example. I don't run my pool pump at the same time as I run my irrigation. So irrigation goes on in the morning, pool pump in the afternoon, and then irrigation at night. So in three separate lots. You can even get to a point where you're running each appliance you know, throughout the day without them you know, overlapping each other, depending on how much usage you, know, you need. And it saves a tremendous amount of money. And I, I probably for bang for buck, that is gonna be your winner, especially for the geezer. Now the one I use the most is the geezer one. Switching that guy on and off and putting him on a countdown, you know, you, cause you put the geezer on and what happens, you forget about it. And it's on for the next four hours and it's just eating up the electricity. So putting a countdown on it or just putting it on the time of day where you shower uh, will save you a whole bunch of money. But we will be covering more about the Wi-Fi switches um, in another video. And I'm quite excited about showing my, my setup as well. So guys, that's the long and short of my solar system. A nice quick overview of you know, what I've got. I will be running through some real good detail about each inverter and when they settings and how to set them uh, correctly. It's, it's a, how can I say, not the most advanced uh, user interface I've ever seen, but it's, it, it's very usable. Um, and once you get through some of the jargon and try some settings, um, you will be on your way to managing your own solar system. And like I said, it's very important to get yourself some monitoring in and monitor as much as possible. Then you can understand what to turn off, what to turn on, if you need more battery later or do you need more PV later. So the purpose of this video was to go through uh, how a parallel system works, the how you can scale it. And I feel like this is gonna be the same for uh, everyone out there that wants to grow into a system. Nobody really um, buys the massive system and then you know, grows into it per se. Um, but you know, again, that's, that's also possible. But as you can see to parallel and uh, parallel, you know, grow your battery bank and your inverter in, in the way that I did it is totally, totally feasible. It's budget friendly too. One of the biggest factors is to check out the specification. And if you do buy an inverter that is much bigger than it needs to, to grow into, that's a good thing to do. Uh, just be aware that your rooftop might, might not be able to handle all the panels. So you're really limited by the panels as you, uh, you know, more so than the inverter. And also, also what you're running at the same time, because um, if you calculate all those things together to work out and then add a little bit more, maybe you can add 20% more into your uh, consumption that you use, that will give you a good indication of what your end result will be. And at the end of the day, guys, data is king, because if you don't know what you're running and if you don't monitor it, 
you're just gonna be throwing money away uh, with for no real reason other than that you know you need to be on top of your energy consumption that's one of the biggest pieces to take away from this video okay that bug wraps it up guys i hope you like this new format that we are introducing for this new year and we want to do more of these types of my solar setup videos please tell me in the comments below if you like this video if you want more of it if you did enjoy this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you in the next one and as you can see, it's not on at the moment. Oh, it is on, sorry. It's just all about showing off my, my system. I even painted the wall <laughs> ready for you guys to see. Um, I think I have around, I think it's 10, 16. Um, I, got, I think I got 26. Uh, so it's 10.6 uh, 10, uh, 10 kilowatt array. Ping, you know, ping, 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 ping. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> and as always, don't forget to subscribe. Sorry. <laughs>